And we are live. This is going to be our UFC uh, on Fox 20 podcast video, Bro Picks. This is uh, this is Ricky. What's up, guys? This is Justin. You know, just playing some Pokemon Go. Little shout out to UFC Bro Picks, and uh, let's do this. All right. Yeah, and I wanted to say that Pokemon Go is very gay, and uh, don't say that. Don't bring it up in our podcast again. So. Uh, Another shout out though, um, I wanted to make a shout out to this website that I've been coding. Um, I have a bachelor's degree in computer engineering, and uh, the link to my it's all it's all done um, on Node.js. So um, we'll, I wanted to make it the best pot, the best MMA website um, possible. So I'm open to suggestions. You can just uh, comment any suggestions below. That be I really appreciate it. But uh, moving on to the video, uh, let's go. We got Justin wants to start it off for us today. Let's do it. I thought you failed high school, dude. Nah, man, I'm an engineer, bro, and a purple belt in jiu-jitsu. Another okay. shout out. I got a I got a tournament this weekend on Saturday. Um, I'm gonna be fighting at. I'm gonna be uh, competing at 154 pounds. So this Saturday in Los Angeles at Jiu-Jitsu World Tour. So if you're out there, keep a lookout for me. Okay, All right. good luck. Quit bragging. Let's do this. Okay. All right. I uh, hope you lose. So, first fight we got in heavyweight division. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're going to win. Okay. Go ahead. We got Luis Enrique Go versus ahead. Dimitri Samakalov. Uh, Dimitri's making his debut. And I don't know. I'm out of, I've seen a couple of his fights, and I don't, I'm not that impressed, to be honest. And uh, a lot of people are saying that Enrique is going to lose his fight. He's the dog. He actually impressed me against Francis in uh, his debut. He took him down a couple times. He took some big shots, and uh, he lost in the second round. But Francis is a killer. We'll talk about him later. So I'm going to go with the upset in this fight. I'm going to go with Enrique. I feel like he's beaten better guys. He has a good shin. He's well-rounded. Um, we hadn't seen Dimitri fight in UFC, so there's a red flag right there. And uh, he was supposed to fight for a while. He's been hurt. But, uh, you know, I'm not a big – a uh, fan of picking Brazilians because A, I'm racist, and B, you know, the whole PED thing. But uh, I'm going to go with Enrique in this fight. It's a heavyweight fight. I'm not going to be bet on this fight. Both these guys are at the bottom of the barrel. But uh, I'll be picking Enrique. What about you? So I'm going to probably have to disagree with you. I'm going to go with the favorite just because uh, not only did – I don't know if you remember, but uh, Luis Enrique just got – he got devastated like his knockout was devastating bro like it wasn't it wasn't like a tko stoppage it was like a knockout right yeah but he was looking pretty decent in that fight before that dude he took francis down like four times right this guy dimitri he's coming in undefeated um he's got some submissions he's got some tkos so uh i think that he had he seems like he's a very well-rounded fighter and he's he seems like he can finish from 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 uh, in, mo in very different ways, so I don't know. That kind of says a lot to me. I think I'm gonna have to go with the with the favorite on this fight and uh, just go with uh, with Dimitri because yeah, it, it just uh, and like like I said, I wasn't too impressed with. Luke. He might have taken down Naganu, but that's that just means that Naganu's ground game is very weak, in my opinion, because uh, he was taking. I don't know that that's like 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 we said. That's another discussion. Uh, Nagano's a beast, but uh, I just still think Dimitri is going to – it seems like the more well-rounded from his resume. He's got some submissions. He's got TKOs. So uh, I don't know. We'll see how it goes. But I, I think Dimitri is going to – he's going to take it because it seems like most of his wins are by finish. So, um, yeah, I'm looking at it right now. It's, it seems like they're all by finish. Submission, TKO, TKO, submission, no submission. That's pretty beast. So I'm going to go with Dimitri. Let's go to the next one. We got uh, Allers and we got Jim Allers and Jason Knight. They're going to be fighting at the featherweight division at 145 pounds. So uh, Jim Allers is 13-2. and two. Jason Knight is 16-2. and two. Um, They're both pretty newcomers, but if I had to pick, I'm probably going to just have to pick with uh, Jim Allers to win this one. Just because he he just looks like a beast, he just looks like the more athletic fighter, and uh, I think it's going to be too much for Jason to handle. What do you think? 
Yeah, um, I'm going to disagree with you in this fight. Jim Howard doesn't have a good chin, in my opinion, and uh, he does have good stand-up, but I feel like Jason Knight's a pretty good fighter. He lost his debut against uh, Casa Jury, but that dude was a huge featherweight, and he looked very big in that uh, octagon in that fight, and he just took him down at will. But, I mean, Jason Knight's good. He's always, go he's always going for the finish. He has a lot of submission wins, and I can see him getting an early sub in this fight. I'm not that impressed in Jim Mowers. Cole Miller was beating him on the feet before he got eye poked. And uh, Chad Skelly was dominating him on the feet, and Chad Skelly looked terrible in his last fight. And he's not known to have good stand-up. So I'm not impressed with Bowers at all. He has a cool beard. That's about it. But um, I'm definitely going to be going with Jason Knight. He's good, dude. And he had a he did very good outside the UFC before his debut. He didn't look that bad in his debut. He just got outclassed by a top 15 featherweight. He was on short notice, and that and Casajuri looked huge, dude. I mean, he's one of the biggest 145 pounds out there. So I'm gonna go with Knight, and he's a dog too. So I'm gonna go by a sub. All right. Uh, before we do the next fight, I'm gonna do a quick shout out. I actually forgot to uh, our group, UFC Betting Sharks. It's a very good group, and uh, everyone you know should look into it. Only if you if you're big in UFC and you're a good better like us. All right, so the next fight we got in the welterweight division, we got Hector Urbina versus George Sullivan. I think Hector Urbina is one of the worst welterweights in the division. I don't even know why he's on the roster. He's terrible. He didn't look good on tough at all. He's looked pretty bad so far in the UFC. And uh, George Sullivan, you know, he's he's coming off of a knockout loss to uh, Alexander Yakovlev, but I think he was dominating the fight until he got knocked out. And uh, I'm not a big fan of Yakovlev. We'll be talking about this fight later, but or that guy later. But uh, Yakovlev is pretty boring. Sullivan was big, was winning that fight until he got caught, and uh, that's Sullivan's first knockout loss, I think. He has you know some impressive wins. He's fought better guys than Hector Urbina, and uh, I feel like this is a rebound for Joel Sullivan. I can see a, a pretty clear cut decision. So I'm gonna go with Sullivan. Would you say pretty quick submission? No, a pretty clear-cut decision, 30-27. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. His chin is pretty suspect. You know, he got like you said, he got knocked out. Yeah, one time. He's winning. All right, but it's pretty, still pretty suspect. Do you think Hector Abina can beat him, dude? It's still it, suspect. Hector Abina cannot be George Solo. To be honest, I think they both kind of suck. I'm not really impressed with either of these fighters. Um, I'm not gonna bet, but I don't know. I don't. I, I was. I. I. I think I'm. I think I'm gonna have to disagree. I think for some reason I just think Hector Rubino is gonna get a decision. I think he's gonna win. He's probably gonna. I'll Bro, grab. You could be Hector Rubino and look at you. I'm just kidding. <laughs> right. But uh, and I so I could probably beat Sullivan too. No, I'm kidding. But uh, no. Uh, I probably can't be either of these guys, but I think Hector Urbina is going to win for sure. I think he's going to outgrapple him. He's going to get the decision. All right, if you're, confident, if you're confident, bet on him. No, I'm not going to bet. I think they both suck, and I wouldn't bet on either of these fighters, to be honest. What about you? Bet on this fight? I don't think Sullivan sucks. I might put Sullivan in the parlay. This is, I I'm think they're my most confident picks, to be honest. I think Sullivan's going to run right through him. I mean, I don't know. I'm not really excited for the fight, so. I'll call the next fight. <clears throat> All right, the next fight. We got Alex Oliveira versus Munsari. They're going to be fighting at 170 pounds. Alex Oliveira is just coming off a loss from um, the other cowboy. Cowboy, sir, the real cowboy. Cowboy Cerrone. <laughs> Uh, I don't know why he's going with the cowboy nickname. We all know who the real cowboy is. But uh, and then he's fighting James Moonwalker Munsari. He's a Chinese guy from Germany. Um, I think Alex, Alex Oliveira is going to get the win. He that fight when he lost against Daniel Cerrone, he was looking. To be honest, I think he uh, he was kind of beating Cerrone in the stand. Up until it took out Cerrone just impressively, but um, I'm really a big fan of James uh, James Moonsari. Uh, he did he uh, he he won against Cody Pfizer, but 
I mean, and I think I can be Cody Pfizer. You can probably be Cody Pfizer. Cody Pfizer, <laughs> yeah, you're right. <laughs> Pfizer, whatever his fucking last name is. But uh, I'm gonna go with Alex Oliveri. I think he's got. I think he's a more well-rounded fighter. Um, and yeah, I think he's gonna bounce back up after that. Uh, I mean, come on, you you gotta give a break. Not that many people can beat uh, Cowboy Cerrone. He's one. He's definitely one of the best. And 155 or 170. So, um, yeah, I'm going to go with Alex Oliveri, Cowboy. What about you? Yeah, I don't understand why this fight is a, I'm a bypass premium. This is one of the best fights on the card, to be honest. I think this is an early contender for fight of the night. Um, I'm definitely picking Cowboy in this fight, but I think Muntasri has the better stand-up. I think Oliveri needs to get this fight to the mat, and I think he can because Muntasri has terrible takedown defense. And uh, his sub game, I mean, his sub... Uh, defense game is pretty bad, and uh, I do think that both these guys are good on the are, are good in the feet. But just like I said, I think Cowboy Oliveira has good more time, and he needs to take this to the ground. So I see a first round sub, maybe late in the first round, or maybe like a late finish. But I can definitely see this is a good fight, and uh, it's going to be a war. Brazilian Cowboy is the way bigger guy in my opinion. Mitoski is a lightweight, and uh, Alice Cowboy is a big one seventy pounder. So. I'm going to be picking uh, the favorite in this fight by a sub. All right. And, and you know what? Cowboy Oliveira looked good in his debut against Gilbert Burns. But, I mean, you know, he was dominating the fight and then got a sub. But he has a good record, dude. I see some potential. I see Cowboy making making the top 15 appearance pretty soon in the rankings. All right. So the first fight on the prelims, we got in the lightweight division, we got Michael Perseris versus J.C. Cottrell. Um, J.C. Cottrell's making his debut. He's the dog. I'm not that impressed. The Washington tape, he doesn't look that good in my opinion. Um, Perseris is just a big lightweight. He's kind of like Grayson Tebow. He's a grinder. He's ripped. One of the biggest lightweights in the division. He has a couple, you know, he has some good wins in the octagon. Kind of a boring fighter, but I just see him grinding uh, Kasha out. Kind of like maybe a 30-27 decision like I mentioned earlier. So um, I'm picking Michael Perseris. This is probably going to be the most boring fight on the card. Yeah, I'm probably going to have to agree with you on this one. Um, just because Michael Faceres has got more octagon experience. Uh, like you said, he's a pretty big 155-er. I think this guy, J.C. Cacho, is making his debut, you know. Um, so that right there is a – he is at a welterweight, though, so he's going to be a pretty big – I think he's going to be a pretty big uh, – he's going to be a pretty big lightweight because he's fought a welterweight in the past. So it's, I think it's going to be a pretty close fight. But I'm going to have to go with Michael Barraza, whatever, because just more octagon experience. All right, let's move on to the next one. Um, we got uh, Kamari Usman versus Alexander Yukolev. They're going to be fighting at the 170-pound division, welterweight. Um, Usman is 7-1, and one, and uh, Alexander Yukolev is 23-6. and six. So, um, I don't know. I think it's going to be a pretty – I think this fight's going to be a pretty boring fight as well. Um, I think it's going to – actually, you know what? No, I don't. I take that back. I'm sorry. It's going to be a very good fight. I'm going to be looking forward to it. Um, and uh, I'm probably going to be going with Kamara Usman for the win just because I think he's a beast. But uh, Alexander Yakulov does have some pretty good wins. He's beat Gray Maynard, but uh, – Gray Maynard's really old. He's kind of on his way out. He got a first-round TKO against George Sullivan. So, uh, I don't know, man. This fight's going to be pretty close. But uh, I don't know. Who, who are you going to pick? Yeah, this could be either, either be a good fight or a boring fight. I'm going to be going with Usman, but uh, he actually trains about resilience, and uh, he won tough. But I'm not a big fan of him, dude. He's he is a good fighter. He, is, he has probably some of the best wrestling in the division, but he's a boring fighter. He just lays in praise. He's good, man. His stand-up's not bad. He beat Leon Edwards, and Leon Edwards is no joke. So um, I'm not a big fan of Yakovlev, to be honest. I think he's decent, but just like I said earlier, he didn't look that good against Olver until he got the knockout. And he's not that much of a finisher either. And uh, Usman's, you know, he's I'm not a big fan of him, but he's good. Dude, he has potential. If he works on his stand-up, he's going to be good. And his wrestling is... You know, top of the class in my opinion that division. So I'm gonna go with Usman, maybe by a 
a close decision, maybe a sub, but uh, I'm going to pick this one. All right, so the next fight. This is a good fight. It's in the featherweight division. I, we got Darren Elkins versus uh, Godofredo Pepe. Elkins trains at Alcamel now, which is definitely an advantage. He has a good chin. He's a gritty wrestler. He looked pretty good against Chaz Skelly. I thought Skelly was going to dominate him. Skelly threw like four punches the whole fight. Um, I'm going to go with another Brazilian. This is the third Brazilian I'm picking. I'm going with Pepe. Pepe is a good fighter. He looked good on tough. He's a finisher. He goes for it. I mean, I thought he was going to lose to Feely, man. He freaking smoked Feely. And uh, he has a good record, dude. And this, he has a lot of impressive finishes. He, he's so good on the feet, but his ground game is probably better, in my opinion. I mean, he has a flying triangle win. I mean, this dude's a beast. Dude. Not a flying triangle. I think he has an arm. Some sort of triangle, I forgot. But he has a very good ground game, and his stand-up's very good. And uh, Elkins is tough, but... I don't think he has the chin to compete with him, so I'm definitely going to be going with Pepe in this fight. But I, I highlight real finish. Yeah, I'm going to have to agree with you. I'm going to go with Pepe, too, because uh, he's just a finisher, man. Most of his, If you look at his record, most of his wins are by finish, especially in the UFC. He's been doing pretty good. He's coming off of a three-fight win streak. Um, I, and the, but, uh, Darren Elkins, he's he's good, too, but most of his wins are, are by decision. And uh, To me, I think he's kind of a boring fighter. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I'm going to have to go with Godolfo Pepe for sure, just because he's a finisher, and I, I like to go for finishers. So uh, let's move on to the next fight then. This is going to be the, the last fight on the on the Fox prelims, and uh, it's actually going to be a pretty good one in my opinion too. we got Frankie Sainz versus Eddie Wineland, and um, they're going to be fighting at the 135-pound division. So we got Eddie Wineland. Um, to be honest, I'm not too – Impressed with him, he 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 lost pretty bad against Brian Caraway. I mean, we know Brian Caraway is probably an elite grappler at the 135 division, but I mean, he's still not that great. And that was like and that uh, that was that. And then he also lost to Johnny Eduardo uh, in the first round, KO. So uh, you know his chin. I think he broke his jaw on that one or something like that. Maybe. Yeah. But yeah. I think I know he I know he broke his jaw back in the day, so his chin is suspect for sure. Mm -hmm. um, we got Frankie Sainz, who lost to Uriah Faber, went the distance with Uriah Faber. I mean Uriah Faber, if he's not if he's not fighting for the title, then most likely he's gonna win. So uh, um, you know, I, I think I think going the distance with Faber says a lot. He before that he's he he beat uh, he's he's got three wins in the UFC. He beat uh, Nolan Tickman, uh, Benny's friend. So uh, he's not that bad. I think Saint. I, to be honest, I think Saint is going to win this fight. It's probably going to it probably going to be pretty boring, but it's and I think it's going to go to the decision, or Eddie Wineland is just going to get knocked out because of his chin. But yeah, I'm going to go with Saint. What about you? Yeah, I don't know why Wineland's still fighting. Ever since that John Neal Wardle knockout loss where he broke his jaw, he hasn't looked the same. Um, Brian Carey was beating him on the feet. And if Brian Carraway beats you on the feet, you don't belong in the UFC, to be honest. So I don't see how he wins this fight. I got Frankie Sainz in this fight. Sainz looked pretty good against Faber. It was a very close decision. And uh, I think Sainz took some big shots in that fight, too. So Sainz definitely has a good chin. He's a good wrestler. I think he has better stand-up than Wyland. Wyland's done. So I'm going with Sainz in this fight. All right. Um, in the first fight of the night, of the main car, we got Felice Herrig in the strawweight division versus Callan Curlin. Both these girls are pretty attractive, in my opinion. Um, they both lost to Paige Van Zandt. Um, Callan Curlin, a lot of people are, you know on the hype about this girl because she trains with Cyborg and all this, but you know she hasn't looked that impressive, man. I watched her live against uh, Emily Keegan, and uh, Emily Keegan's one of the worst girls out there right now in the division, and she was beating her up on the feet before she lost, and. Uh, I'm not a big fan of Curran. I think Felice Herrig is pretty good. She has a very good sub game, very good wrestler. She gets in your face, and I think she's going to go in there and make a statement and get a first-round sub. So I don't think Curran's going to be able to answer like her because Felice Herrig is a big lightweight, or I mean a big uh, strawweight. And uh, she's a very good wrestler, has very good subs, so I'm definitely going to be picking Herrig in this fight. What about you? Yeah. Um... It's a chick fight. I'm not too. I don't really care about it. But yeah, I'm gonna have to agree with you. I think Felice Herrig is gonna be beat, beat, get the fight. 
Um, she lost to Paige Van Sant, but I mean, she got this, she actually got pretty dominated. But other than, other than that fight, she's been pretty good. I think she did pretty good on tough. But um, yeah, and I I think Felice Herrig is just going to be too athletic, like you said. She's just going to be too aggressive. She's going to push forward, and she's going to get the decision. So yeah, Felice Herrig with that one. So we got next fight. We got the big boys fighting at the heavyweight division. We got Francis Niganu versus Bojan Bojan Mihajalovic. Mihajalovic. I don't know, but uh, this guy I think he's making his debut on the on for UFC. Um, Francis Niganu is a beast. Uh, he's got like he's got two. He's just got two finishes already in the UFC. Um, the second the second finish was by 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 the doctor stoppage, which was which was okay. Um, he's a striker man, and he's pretty good to have on your DraftKings pick. He always gets some pretty, but I don't know how good he is on the ground. To be honest, I think he might have some holes in his game. But uh, who knows? We'll see. It looks like this guy. I, I'm not sure how uh, how this guy uh, Bojan fights. I'm not sure if he's a. It looks I, to be honest. I haven't seen enough tape, but I think he's a striker from what I've seen. Um, and I think these guys are just gonna trade blows, man. And you can't. And I don't think you want to trade blows with Francis. So I'm, the only way this guy has a chance, in my opinion, is if he takes it to the ground. But I don't think he's gonna be able to. Uh, I think Francis is going to get the finish for sure. So I'm going to go with Francis with the finish. What about you? Yeah, Bojan's a pretty small uh, heavyweight, and he's making his debut. Um, I'm not picking against him right now, dude. He looks so good on the feet. He does have you know some question marks on the ground, but I wouldn't say his ground game's weak. I just think it's uh, average. You know, I think he's definitely going to be working on it. And uh, once he fights the top 15 guys, he's going to have to you know have his takedown defense good. But or, I mean, you know, having he can't get taken down when he gets to top of the team division. But anyways, um, yeah, I got Nagano in this fight, dude, by a, probably a first-round highlight finish. I'm not picking against him right now. He's just too good. He's like 260 pounds. He's so lean, dude. He's like one of the fastest heavyweights, man. He's just, he looks like a freaking football player, dude. He, his stand-up is so good. He He's winning this fight. He's a beast. He's definitely going to be a dark horse in this division. So, Francis, all day. All right, this is my favorite fight of the night. We got... In the lightweight division, Essen Barbosa versus Gilbert Melendez. I know you've been a little back and forth in this fight. I know who you're picking, but I don't know why, to be honest. Gilbert Melendez is off roids now, and uh, I don't see him winning this fight. He said in an interview recently that uh, Anthony Pettis uh, had was too fast for him, and Melendez like you know just couldn't keep up with him. Um, sorry, Melendez, but Barbosa is faster than Pettis. I think we saw that in that fight. So I don't see how Melendez wins this fight. Barbosa is at the top right now, and uh, he definitely, you know, needs to work on his takedown defense. But I don't see Melendez taking him down, and I see Barbosa getting the highlight finish. So it could be a fight of the night, but I still see Barbosa finishing late. Why would you pick someone that's off roids? So you know, Melendez, he's a good fighter, man. But if he's worried about, you know, if he was worried about Pettis and saying, "Oh, Pettis is too fast and all this," come on, dude, Barbosa's faster than Pettis. So Barbosa's gonna get this win. What about you? Oh, man. And I think BK Boza has lost to Tony Ferguson. He lost to Michael Johnson. He lost to Donald Cerrone. Yeah, he those are all good up. guys. And he was beating Ferguson. Ferguson just got that Darce, but Ferguson's Darce is so – come on, dude. He's one of the best weapons in the division, bro. He got TKO against Jamie Vaymer. So, I mean, Edson Barboza, he's good. I'm not going to lie, but he's not that consistent. And I don't think his ground. I don't think his takedown defense is that great. The only reason he beat Anthony Pettis was because, like you said, there it was kind of a. And you even said, didn't you think that he got robbed? Did you say? Did you say Anthony Pettis got robbed or no? Against who? Against Barboza. No, Pettis got robbed against Alvarez, bro. Pettis got smoked against Barboza. He didn't do anything in that fight. Well, I don't know, man. I I he still think this? that. Mondes hasn't fought in a year, dude. And before that, he went against Eddie Alvarez, and that was one of the worst fights I've ever seen. That fight put me to sleep. He could have, he should have won that fight. To be honest, I don't think anyone should have won that fight. That fight was terrible. Fuck. Yeah. Mondes trained with the Diaz brothers, but I don't care, man. He's not winning this fight, dude. 
Barbosa trains with Alvarez, man. So, I mean, you know, I'm telling you, man, Barbosa, is at the, he's at the top right now. He's definitely had some, you know, bad losses, but he's looked better than ever lately, dude. So, I'm going with Barbosa. Um, now I think about it, it's like Melendez, like, he doesn't really have the greatest fight IQ. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Uh, I think he's going to try to, now that if I really think, I think he's going to try to strike with Barbosa, and Barbosa's going to light him up. Yeah, he's going to light him up. Okay, he looked good against Ferguson, in my opinion. Ask anybody. He looked really good. He was beating Ferguson until he got darsed. How could he you lose against fight? Michael Johnson? It was like it was a, it was a close fight, but Michael Johnson was outpointing him. Michael Johnson was being more aggressive. I don't know why, because that's Barbosa's game. Michael Johnson's a good fighter, dude. I mean, he is. I don't like him, but he's not. No, he's he's going to get smoked. He's, he's going to get smoked good. against Dustin, but he's, he is a good fighter. Come on, he beat Tony Ferguson, dude. He's a good fighter. He lost, he lost to Benny. Bro, he beat Benny. We all know that. Come on, man. <laughs> okay, that's another. That's another day. So sorry, but any uh, anyway, I don't know, man. All right, to be honest, all right, after I thinking about it, I've been back and forth all day. After talking about it, after thinking about it, Melendez doesn't have the greatest fight IQ. I I think he has the tools to beat him if he stuck to. To, to wrestling but for some reason i don't think he's gonna wrestle him i think they're gonna strike and i think barboza is gonna light him up so i'm gonna go with barboza with the win, with the fin with the win um it's kind of tough i don't think he's gonna be able to finish melendez because he's a he's a freaking warrior but uh, i'm gonna go with barboza with the with the decision uh, i think he's gonna outsmart him he's just gonna fight smarter than melendez to be honest so He's not gonna get. He's not gonna play Melendez's game. He's gonna play his own game, and Melendez is not gonna take him down. So yeah, he's not. I don't see him taking him down, Barbosa. So I'm gonna go with Barbosa. All right, let's go on to the main event. We got Holly Holm making a return versus Valentina Spivenko. Um Holm, the preacher's daughter. They're gonna be fighting at the 135 bantamweight division. Uh, She's trying to make a comeback after getting choked out by Misha Tate. Um, she got choked out pretty bad. It looks like she has no fucking jujitsu whatsoever. Uh, she has no uh, defense at all when it comes to submissions. So, but her striking is very good. But after that fight, we all know she has some serious holes in her game. And um, we got Valentina Shravenko. She's known. She's also a Muay Thai striker. So uh, I think these girls are gonna strike, and I think I don't know why it seems like our the seems like a lot of people are picking uh, Valentina. I think Holly Holmes is gonna freaking wreck her. She's gonna she's gonna smoke her, dude. Like easy money, because uh, they're gonna strike. They're not gonna take it down. She's a Muay Thai fighter, and Holly Holmes is a very good striker. She's probably one of the best strikers in the division, I think. But uh, in the weight in the in the women's bantamweight division, but. Yeah, I don't, I don't think it's going to be close. I think it has a potential of being very boring. But uh, I definitely think Holly Holmes is going to get the win for sure. What about you? Yeah, both these girls are at the top in their stand-up. I mean, their kickboxing is so good. But um, I agree with you. I'm picking home, but I think it's going to be a good fight. I think it could be back and forth. Um, I am picking home though all day in this fight. I think home has a better stand-up. I think Bowery's good, dude, really good. But I think she's just being thrown in against the wolves. I mean, Holly Holm lost her belt. She's a beast, dude. You do not want to be in the pocket with her. Her kicks are brutal, dude. But uh, Shachenko's good, too, man. She has good stand-up. She wasn't looking that good against Nunez until the third round. But I just – I don't see her taking her down, and I just feel like she's going to get outpointed. Like, I mean, it could be a back-and-forth brawl, but I do see Holm getting her hand raised in the day. I mean, Shachenko could hurt Holm, in my opinion. I mean, it could be – like, I'm disagreeing with you because I think it's going to be a closer fight. I don't think it's going to be a walk out of the park for home, but uh, I'm definitely picking home. I think home's going to finish her maybe in the fourth round, but uh, it's not an easy fight. I mean, home better go in there and, you know, keep her hands up or she's going to get knocked out. So I'm going to be going with the better, you know, in my opinion, stand up. And uh, they both their stand ups really good, but I think home has a little better stand up. Her kicks are too good. And I think Bowery's going to get KO White in the fight. So I'm picking home. All right, guys, so we'll be back soon for uh, Woodley versus Waller. There's some good fights on that card, and uh, see you guys later. Hope you guys like our video. Yeah, and check out our website. Thanks for and tuning play, in. And play Pokemon Go. See ya.